Hidden under this security cover is the most destructive force ever devised by man, an atomic bomb. The energy of 10,000 lightning bolts, enough to wipe out a city of 200,000, is packed within this harmless appearing case. So, with healthy respect and cool efficiency, the weapon is hoisted into the bomb bay of a B-36. For this is another bombing mission conducted by the Air Force in conjunction with the Atomic Energy Commission to test new weapon ideas, to devise effective handling techniques and delivery methods suitable under any and all conditions of weather and warfare. Now, the loading completed, the B-36 is on its way. Over the Pacific, the plane climbs to cruising altitude. We will join it again on its bombing run during this test mission. Tests such as this are vital to the security and defense of our nation, for bombs are useless unless they can be delivered on targets. And therefore, air delivery of atomic bombs is one of the main responsibilities of the Air Force, particularly of the Strategic Air Command and the Tactical Air Command. Today, the Strategic Air Command, with its medium and heavy bombers, can carry atomic missiles to the heart of an enemy country anywhere in the world. For example, a B-29 can easily fly from Omaha to England non-stop, a distance of approximately 3,400 nautical miles. The B-29 medium bomber is one of the workhorses of the strategic bombing fleets. Developed from the Flying Fortress of World War II, and the B-29 was the backbone of the heavy bombardment fleet in the war against Japan, and also is seen at yeoman service in Korea. It can carry a 60-inch atomic weapon and bomb targets at a speed of 300 knots from 30,000 feet. With in-flight refueling now available, far distant targets come within range of the B-29. An improved version of the B-29 is the B-50, designed to go higher and farther. The tall vertical tail surface on the B-50 and the large oil coolers beneath the 3,500 horsepower engines permit easy identification of this plane. Since all B-50s are equipped for in-flight refueling, they also are potential intercontinental bombers. In fact, the B-50 Lucky Lady flew around the world non-stop in four days by means of this technique. And as for atomic bomb delivery, the B-50 can carry a 60-inch atomic weapon approximately 4,000 nautical miles at 300 knots and bomb effectively from 35,000 feet. During World War II, when the possible loss of bombing bases close to Europe was considered, plans were prepared for a giant of a plane weighing 180 tons. This was the B-36, capable of making a round-trip, non-stop combat mission to Europe or a straight-line flight to India, a range of more than 8,500 nautical miles. The B-36 is manned by a crew of 16. It has four jet engines in twin pods on each wing for takeoff and climb power, plus six conventional engines giving it 42,000 horsepower and an operating ceiling of 53,000 feet. On one endurance mission, a B-36 was in the air for 51 hours of continuous flight on a fuel load of 22,000 gallons, the equivalent of two tank cars. In this exhibition of carpet bombing, a tremendous load of 84,000 pounds of bombs pouring out of four bomb bays of a B-36 lays a highway of destruction on the Earth below. Multiply this 4,000 times to get the idea of the wallop packed in only two 60-inch atomic bombs, which can be delivered easily by a modified B-36. But the rapid advance of high-speed jet fighter planes necessitated the development of jet bombers, the first of which is the B-47, an all-jet plane with swept-back wings, powered by six jets with a single and a twin pod on each wing. And the B-47 replaces the B-29 and has a range of 3,400 nautical miles. For longer missions, 
in-flight refueling is required, and for this purpose, the KC-97 is used. And the B-47 can carry one 60-inch atomic bomb and is capable of a speed of 550 knots at 40,000 feet. A crew of only three men operate the B-47, and therefore each man serves in more than one capacity. As an example, the man in the nose has a triple threat function as bombardier, navigator, and radar man. On short takeoffs with a maximum load and a short runway, 18 JATO bottles are used for additional power. And speaking of power, the greatest of all jet bombers is the new B-52, with eight improved type jet engines giving it a phenomenal range and load capacity. In a functional sense, the B-52 replaces the B-36. It has a speed of 550 knots and can carry two of the 60-inch weapons. Both the B-52 and the B-47 use the parachute braking method to slow down landing speed. When it comes to just transporting bombs, the record is held without question by the C-124, which can carry four of the fully packaged 60-inch bombs from stockpile to forward sites, either transcontinental or transoceanic. It was a C-124 delivery such as this that brought the atomic weapon now in the bomb bay of the B-36, at this moment high in the sky over the Pacific, on its way to the target area. Final preparations for the drop are underway. Dog one to destiny control. Leveling out at 8,500 feet for IFI. And this flight is a test of a new weapon. So, black curtains are on the windows as protection against heat and light from the burst. To permit in-flight insertion of the weapon, the B-36 holds a flight pattern at an altitude of 8,500 feet. AC to weapon air. How's the IFI coming along? Weapon air to aircraft commander. IFI proceeding satisfactorily. In-flight insertion is an exacting job that calls for calm efficiency. It is performed at a lower altitude to eliminate the hampering of oxygen equipment. Weapon air to aircraft commander, IFI completed. AC to engineer, set climb power. Now the B-36 climbs to bombing altitude. The weapon is armed, and until it is dropped, the arming and firing circuits are monitored continuously. A short time later, after a final report on winds and weather, the B-36, now at bombing altitude, starts its final run. Radar to AC. Approaching target area. atomic exclamation points in the sky punctuate the record written by the Air Force as it acquires experience for strikes on strategic enemy targets with the atomic bomb. And as smaller atomic weapons are developed, their tactical use becomes a reality. And the tactical air command with the use of atomic weapons is better able to fulfill its mission of gaining air superiority. 
interdicting enemy supplies and troops moving to the front, and providing close support to friendly troops. Among the aircraft in tactical use is the B-45, powered by four jet engines, two in a pod on each wing. It carries a crew of three. Here, the B-45 is being loaded with a 30-inch Mark VII weapon. The B-45 is equipped with a Norden visual bomb sight, the Q-24 radar sight, or Shoran, and has shown phenomenal accuracy in bomb drops. This light bomber makes a very stable bombing platform. Another plane of the tactical striking force is the B-57 assigned to the night intruder wings as a nighttime extension of the day fighter-bomber capability. A plane of this type made a round-trip crossing of the Atlantic Ocean, enabling its crew to have breakfast in England, lunch in Newfoundland, and tea again in England. Equipped with Shoran, or guarded by MSQ-1 radar, the B-57 can deliver a 30-inch atomic weapon to tactical targets at night and in bad weather. For a jet plane, it has a very fast takeoff and very low landing speed. It has over a 2,000 nautical mile range at 500 knots. When it comes to speed, of course, the now you hear them, now they're gone, jet fighters are supreme. With speeds that exceed 600 knots. These high speeds greatly increase the effectiveness of jet fighters, particularly in executing tactical missions within 500 miles of the front lines. By means of in-flight refueling, normal operating range of jet fighters can be extended considerably. Using in-flight refueling techniques, complete squadrons of F-84s have flown over the Pacific to Japan. And of course, the same technique permits the F-84 to be used as escort for long-range strategic daylight missions. In addition to functioning as a fighter escort and fighter interceptor, the F-84 and the F-86, which showed up so well against the MiG-15 in Korea, can operate now with great effectiveness as fighter bombers on tactical objectives. To the devastating effect of machine guns, rockets, conventional bombs, and napalm, can now be added the vastly greater destruction of a tactical atomic bomb. This small weapon, externally carried, can be delivered either by conventional dive bombing or by the newly developed low altitude bombing system the LABS method. In this system, the aircraft comes in on deck at a predetermined speed over an initial point, which is a known distance from the target. Over this initial point, a computer is started, which tells the pilot when to go into his 4G pull-up. In this pull-up, when the aircraft reaches the predetermined angle with a horizontal, the bomb is automatically released. The aircraft continues its maneuver to escape the effects of the bomb, which is lobbed with pinpoint accuracy to the target. And so this atomic cloud is a symbol of Air Force capability. A capability to strike with a wide choice of aircraft, from long-range bombers to speedy jet fighters. A capability to deliver with a variety of methods the entire family of atomic weapons, whenever and wherever necessary. A capability to guard with its atomic arm the welfare and security of our country. <laughs>